Hello, uh, everybody. I would like to talk about uh, Rescience. So, in two words, this is a journal. This is a journal for uh, replicated science, and I will explain uh, a bit more. So, I'm working in a computational neuroscience, and uh, more specifically, I'm uh, doing a model of the basal ganglia. So, this is a structure involved in decision making and uh, action selection. And there are a lot of uh, models around, and uh, there was one model that uh, was really interesting. So uh, I asked my student, PhD student, say, okay, let's use this model, and we can start to to do some uh, some more modeling with uh, with this model. Well, one part of the problem, uh, there was uh, no easy access to the to the sources. You were not on uh, any uh, repository. Uh, there were no uh, version control. And the model description in the paper was quite ambiguous, and there was some uh, missing information. So we asked the author for the source of the of the model, and then we discovered it was uh, 6,000 lines and 100 files, and it was made in a Delphi uh, Pascal. So it was uh, well, really, uh, really hard to uh, to understand. So this is. Well, it means that the model is not really uh, reproducible. We, can, uh, we were not even able uh, to compile it um, and only to, uh, to read the source. And this reproducibility is uh, quite uh, important, but it's really critical in, uh, in science. So we have uh, one model, and you want to check if it's, uh, if it's okay, if it runs as uh, expected. So you want to, uh, to just reproduce the experiment and check the facts. So this is what is done in uh, every domain of science. And in computational science, we could expect that it would be easier because we have a computer. Uh, we have control on the randomness of the experiment, which is not the case in uh, other science like uh, biology or physics. So it should be easier. And uh, to make a long story short, the, well, reality is really different. There is one case in my uh, domain in computational neuroscience, but there are many cases. So I've uh, talked with uh, different people, and I, I know this is also the case in computa computational biology or uh, physics, and uh, etc. So what we did is, uh, well, mostly my student, I asked her, okay, let's rewrite the, the whole thing. And uh, she was thinking, okay, maybe it will be 6,000 lines I have to write just before even starting my, my PhD. Well, fortunately, because we, uh, we did this uh, replication after the main paper, it was easier. So we use a Python uh, language, and in the end, we have only 200 uh, lines of, uh, for the model. So this is pretty much the same story as uh, yesterday for Michael, where it goes from uh, only 100 lines of uh, Python. And this is very, uh, very important, because without this effort in replication, rewriting the model, the model would, ha would have been dead and forgotten. And in computational neuroscience, it happens, well, a lot always, a lot of time. So for example, we have the V1 area in the brain. Today, we maybe have like a thousand model of uh, V1, just because you cannot reuse the model or it has been, uh, it has been uh, forgotten. So replication is something different from uh, uh, reproducibility. So the idea is that you don't want to just take the code and run it on your computer, you really want to rewrite everything. So the starting point is you get the paper and you are you're supposed to have all the explanation concerning the model and you try to rewrite the model. And when you do this, this is when you realize that, okay, there are maybe some missing information or some things that doesn't uh, work as uh, advertised in, uh, in the paper. So this is really a, a nice exercise. And once you do that, you have a, um, uh, a second implementation of the same model, which can be really, uh, really useful. And at least for me, for my uh, PhD students, I uh, often uh, ask them to, okay, get this paper and try to replicate the model. Try to rewrite the model. It's a very good way to really understand uh, the paper and the model. And usually you do this, and the, this new model will stay in the hard drive in the worst case, and in the base case, it will be on a GitHub. But uh, it's, uh, it's a pity it stay only on th in the hard drive, because this replication can be useful for a lot of people. So the very simple idea is, OK, let's review this model, and we publish it. And of course, we publish it in, uh, uh, in Rescience. 
So the whole idea is that, uh, well, it's a peer review journal because we will look at your code and also at the articles that come with, uh, with the code. We don't want just the code, we also want some explanation about the, about the code. And because we have absolu absolutely no money, it will live on uh, GitHub because it's easier and we can do everything on, uh, on GitHub. So the idea is not really new because for the uh, EuroSciPy and the SciPy proceedings, those are done on, uh, on uh, GitHub and uh, those people show that it's uh, possible to have peer review of pr procedure just on, uh, on GitHub. And as I say, why GitHub? Well, mostly because it's free and popular. So even for young people, if they don't know GitHub, it's a good way to tell them, okay, you have to go to GitHub, put your code, write your article, and you will get uh, uh, published. And also there are all, all kinds of uh, advantages in, uh, in GitHub. So how to submit? Well, it's rather easy. There is a a uh, repository called Rescience Submission. You have to fork <coughs> this repository. Then you will have a code uh, directory, an article directory, uh, data, and notebook if you. So you can implement your, uh, the new paper the way you want. Only for the article, this is Markdown format, and we are using Pandoc. And this is where you describe the, uh, the new implementation and what you have to change and what and how you replicate the results. Because of course, when we are talking about replication, we want some proof that you actually replicate the original uh, paper. So either by having the same, uh, the exact same result, numerical results, or having the same uh, behavior for, well, it really depends on the kind of uh, computational science you're, you're involved. Okay, so you write your code, data, and articles, then you can, uh, you submit a pull request, and then we will assign an editor and reviewers, and then we have a, like a, a regular pull request, so for this one we won't merge immediately, and indeed we won't mer merge uh, at all, but we will use this pull request to discuss the article and to ask for some change or for some clarification, because reviewer will try to run your code, and if it doesn't work for some reason or the other, they will uh, tell you and then you will uh, correct the, the code. And once this is done and the article is uh, accepted, it can be published and we'll get a DOI th through uh, Zenodo. So this is a very uh, easy and free. And uh, maybe I forgot to tell, this is a main address for the organization and then you have Rescience, Rescience to go into the, uh, the journal. So this is, what a, a pull request look like, but maybe we can go uh, online. Okay, so this is the initial uh, submission. You just say, okay, I want to have uh, this paper review. This is a reproduction of that, uh, that paper. And then you have the, the editor. So f this was the first paper. It was also for testing the whole procedure. So Tiziano here was the uh, editor and uh, two colleagues of mine were the reviewer for, because it was in a computational no science. So they asked us uh, well, some change and some also some uh, reflection on the whole uh, procedure. But in the end we get uh, uh, the paper was accepted and then we can uh, put it on uh, Zenodo. So this is a, a table of matter of the journal. It's uh, on the wiki on GitHub. And this is the article. So you have the link to the PDF, the code repository, but it could be also the data or the notebook if you are uh, using a notebook. This is a review and this is a, a DOI through Zenodo. Uh, yeah. And so also on, uh, where is it? No, it's not here. You have also a view of the journal on, yeah, Zenodo. So you can, you can track every, uh, every paper. And this is what a paper looks like, so maybe it will change, but this is, well, <laughs> let's say regular paper. The most important is, okay, for the title, we just put a RE to tell uh, this is a replication of this paper and it helps you track what is a replication. This is a original reference of the paper we uh, did replicate, and reviewer, editor, and blah, 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 and you have the link to the code repository directly on, uh, on GitHub. 
So the official start will be on uh, September. Well, mostly this is uh, today. So you can uh, already submit paper. One of the problems is that we are uh, making the editorial board and the reviewer, so it will grow during the year, hopefully. But if you have no editor and no reviewer in your domain, well, it might be a, a bit more complicated. What you can do, you can uh, well start the project just to make it uh, known. You can follow the Twitter account and, of course, tell your colleague, uh, mailing list, blog, Twitter, or whatever, and tell your students, or if you're a student, you can, and if you replicated uh, some result, you can just uh, publish it in, uh, at this place. And, of course, you can well submit articles and become a re reviewer, so just contact me and... Uh, We'll, uh, we'll see how this can be done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have time for a few questions. Oh, right there. Uh, Nicholas, I think this is absolutely amazing, and I hope it becomes used a lot. But my experience with uh, these initiatives is that it's very difficult to get scientists to do something unless they gain something institutionally from doing it. So yeah. have you thought about contacting like institutions like the Center for Open Science or like uh, funding bodies? Because that's the only, like, that's the way you get scientists to play along basically. Yeah, I think uh, we think about this. So there are some initiatives for journal where you ask the scientists, okay, if you want to publish, you have to make your code on GitHub, public, versioning. People won't do that. Because when you have experimental code, you want to publish, you, well, most of the time you don't have time to have a very nice code. So this is why this is more interesting, because you, you uh, will uh, make the replication after. And uh, I hope that the students, it can be master students, PhD students, but also researchers, will, uh, because you need to understand the models, they, are, they will be interested in doing those replication, and I think they are already doing this, and what we say to them is that, okay, now you can also publish your replication, and it will be useful. So it might work, or, well, we'll see, I have uh, no idea. But for, yeah, for, I would say, regular scientists, I don't know if they want to do this, uh, this effort. Well, Yeah, but we have no money. Yeah. Well, we can put some stars. <laughs> so for the yeah for the editorial board and the reviewer. Okay, you can gain yeah some star. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so when you click on the star, you see what is a review. So each star is a review. So it's also a way to see who is active or whatever. So if you want some star, jo join us. <laughs> Hi, um, what license do you require code to be submitted under so that it's open reusable? Is it GPL or something more, uh, more I less think copy we left? copy the license from, uh, where is it? Uh, okay, let's go to the... Yeah, it's op well, it's open access, it's kind of mandatory. Uh, this is in the code repository. No, does it? Oh. I think we have different license for the text. Okay, I forgot the license. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> so it's in the article. <coughs> so yeah, it's, uh, it's creative common share alike for the for the text. We copy from the plus journal, but maybe it will change. Just a big question. Um, have you tried contacting big uh, scientific journal publishers like Nature or Springer, for example, because um, it may be worthwhile looking at collaboration with them and see what they think about it? Yeah. Ideally, we would like to have a, like a sample to say, okay, this, artic this article has been replicated, so it's, uh, you, can, uh, you can use it. One of the problems also is that uh, well at some point we know that people will, will try to replicate one article and they won't be able to do it. Yep. And so what do we do? So do we publish something to say, okay, this is not reproducible? Yes. 
it might be hard, so we have to think. I, I know, I know uh, some articles that should be marked as non-reproducible because people actually <laughs> lied about the results. Okay. So well, we are ready to, to <laughs> publish uh, this kind of uh, result, but uh, well, uh, I'm sure original author won't appreciate. But. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I thank the speaker again.